Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to r slash pro revenge, where you'll hear some tales of people getting what they deserve. Guys, in this episode, there's three stories. The first is a shady couple who basically steals a car from a dealership. The second is how OP deals with an annoying upstairs neighbor. And we'll finish off with a story of a parent getting some sweet revenge on her neighbor because her neighbor made fun of her child. Seriously, who does that? Guys, I hope you stay for the stories today and hit that subscribe button for future stories. Let's get into it. This first story is titled, Steal My Car? I'll Wreck Your Life. Backstory. I'm a part of a small family-owned used car dealership. We have maybe 50 cars on the lot at any time, and our main business is subprime, or people with less than perfect credit. We truly want to help the people that can't afford or have credit to buy from a new car dealership. We're actually very liked in our small community. So recently, I had these customers. Let's call her wife and him husband. They're early 20s. They come into my dealership, and I like them. They seem like a nice young couple, trying to start their lives out. They have two very sweet little girls, and look like they could just use a break. They've made some mistakes in their early lives, and have less than perfect credit. I coach them on how to improve their credit, and they seem sincerely interested in fixing it, so I bust my ass to get them a loan, with the wife's mother co-signing on a gently used SUV. The wife is literally crying, hugging me because every other dealership turned them down. Now, they're a little short on the down payment, so I take a check for the balance, and we agree that I'll cash it on the husband's next payday, which is mistake number one. I genuinely wanted to give them a break. I forget about them until next week, when I drop the check at the bank along with other deposits. The next thing I know, I receive a notice that the check has bounced, along with a couple of NSF fees attached for me, and the check comes back. It's a dollar amount that's considered a first-degree misdemeanor in our state, just under a felony. I reach out to the wife to see what happened and how we can make arrangements to get this taken care of. The last thing I want to do is to go after a young couple with two small kids. At first, the wife is a little shocked and insists that the funds were pulled from their accounts and I showed them a picture of the NSF check. She understands and says they can pay half in two weeks when she's paid again, and then in another two weeks, pay the other half. I agree to this and take them on their word, which is mistake number two. A couple weeks rolls around, and I don't hear from the wife or husband, and now I'm thinking I've been taken for a ride. They've been ignoring my calls and texts and totally ghosting me. I get a call from the bank and come to find out that they haven't made their first payment either. Now with this particular bank, if a customer does not make their first payment, we have to essentially buy back the deal. Basically, we have to give the bank the money they sent us for the loan. After blowing up their phones and leaving almost 10 voicemails, they finally call me back. I get a sob story that he got let go from his job and he just got a new one and mom is going to help them get back on their feet. I go through hell and high water with the bank to make a deal that if they make their payment, they'll keep the loan, but I'm still on the hook if they missed any of the next three payments. The wife also tells me that they'll make payments to me on the bounce check once he starts getting his paychecks. So I agree. They make their payment to the bank, and I go about my life until the next month comes around. The bank notifies me, saying that the wife didn't make the next month's payment and won't answer any of their calls. At this point, I'm furious, and I'm ready to get their vehicle. They won't answer any of my calls, so I call their mom, who co-signed for the vehicle, which I hated to do, but she's responsible for the loan as well. Mom scrounges everything in her social security paycheck to help try to make the payment for them, and is short. Wife and husband tells her that they'll cover the balance, and, of course, they don't pay. The bank says the deal's a buyback, and we need our money back for the loan within seven days. Now, the only way that I can pay back their loan is if my floor plan, which is basically a giant credit card we buy cars on, gets pictures of the car in my possession. 
I try to call, text, and email to get a hold of the wife and husband, and they block me on everything. They're basically just stealing the vehicle without paying. They even blocked mom, who's been trying to help them get this handled. So yes, they even screwed over their own mother in this ordeal. I just want the car back and move on with my life. So this is where I go pro-revenge on them. I begin by dropping the check off at the local prosecutor, and they are delighted to file charges against them. I do some skip tracing, calling family members, all of which are more happy to help because come to find out that the husband has had seven jobs in four months and has burned every single family member with the money they've borrowed. I find the wife's father on Facebook. I find out that the father has been trying to take custody of the two kids because of how they treat them. He informs me that they're staying in a sister's house right over the border. Note that we're on the state line of two states. Remember this. I call up the repo company and even myself drive an hour to go get the vehicle. They've been hiding it in the garage, according to the neighbors and repo company. I do some researching to find out that they're both on probation for stealing a bunch of stuff from multiple stores. So I, of course, find and call up Mrs. Probation Officer to see if she has the last known address. I then mention to her that they're staying above the state line and bounced a very large check to me, and they're facing fresh charges in my town. She appreciates the knowledge. Now, while I was up at their house one evening, I talked to one of the neighbors, who also hates them, and convinced the neighbor to call me if they see the vehicle outside. It took one day. I get the call and I send a very large friend who lives nearby them to go get the vehicle. After many expletives berating my friend, they hand over the vehicle, but not before calling me and telling me that they're gonna sue me for everything I've got. I'm out quite a bit of money from the ordeal, but here's the best part. I just found out that by living out of state, they violated probation and just got sentenced to 30 days in jail from that, and they also had their video court date with the local judge on the new charges of the bounce check. I got my car back, and guess what? They lost their kids. Deadbeat wife's father got custody of the two kids. OP, you're such a kind-hearted person. It goes to show that even people with the biggest hearts that truly want to help people can only be messed with so many times until they decide that enough is enough. He also helped to make the kids' lives much better. What a great pro-revenge story. This next story is titled, The Most Expensive Way Ever to Get the Police Involved. My wife and I had a first floor condo in what had previously been a nice complex. Unfortunately, over time, the couple who lived above us, hereafter designated as AA for Angry Alcoholic and AAG for Angry Alcoholic Girlfriend, began drinking heavily, or maybe they just got louder about their drinking. Nearly every night became a massive screaming match between them. They'd stay up until 2 a.m. shouting at each other at the top of their lungs, and then one of them would put on music at full blast to drown out the other. Their taste in music wasn't actually bad, but when it's 2 a.m. and my floor is vibrating, it's a problem. Sometimes they'd even take their fight out into the parking lot just to be sure all the neighbors were treated to a detailed explanation of who had cheated on who and who was threatening to dump who. Neither of them ever actually left. They just went out to their car and threatened to, loudly. After arguments, the following day, you could usually find the guy working on his car in the carport right outside of our front door. As far as I can tell, all he did was sit there and rev the engine for hours on end. I have no idea when he slept, maybe while we're at work. We and the other neighbors complained to the condo board, who issued a warning, which AA and AAG ignored. Eventually, the condo board started fining them, but AA found a genius solution. Just don't pay the fine. All the condo board could do was eventually put a lien on AA's condo, but that would only become a problem for them when they sold the place. Apparently, they couldn't actually foreclose on him, or maybe they just didn't want to go to the trouble. Trying to talk to him directly was useless. If we managed to catch him during a rare moment of sobriety, he'd just kind of blow us off. But if we caught him while he was drunk, 
he'd get pretty threatening and was then even louder for days. We even tried calling the police, but they weren't interested unless he had actually crossed the line into a felony. They gave him a few warnings, which he also ignored. Eventually, my wife and I decided to sell our condo and move, for multiple reasons that definitely included AA and AAG. Because of the timing of our move, our realtor wound up actually showing the condo while we were home a couple of times, and we discovered that one of our potential buyers was a city police officer, her husband, and their one-year-old baby. Unfortunately, their offer was $3,500 below the top offer. So after talking it over, we told our realtor to accept their offer anyway, and we'd just eat the loss. So AA and AAG had a cop move in directly below them. I'm Facebook friends with a couple of our old neighbors, and in the six months since we've moved, AA had been arrested multiple times. He had his car impounded at least once. Apparently, now he's trying to be quieter, but that only lasts until he gets drunk, and then he's screaming again, and then the cycle of getting arrested continues. His new downstairs neighbor has long ago had enough of this, and does not appreciate it that he wakes up her kid, and I guess she also doesn't appreciate that he shouts at her. He's in an obnoxious neighbor war with a cop, and he's losing badly. Hopefully soon he'll wind up in jail for longer than a couple of days. Guys, that condo board needs to get their act together. So my friend lives in a condo, and was recently threatened with eviction, because someone complained about her dog being too loud, and was always barking. So how the heck did this couple keep getting away with arguing at 2am, and how the heck did the other neighbors not come out and throw stuff at them? This last story is titled, Make fun of my kid? I'll get you back somehow. For a bit of background, my next door neighbor is, and was a college student. She lives with our actual neighbor, her boyfriend. She's a typical crazy college kid. Weekend parties, drinking on her patio all hours of the night, and weird hours. You know the drill. I figured she was just trying to experience college life, so why not? You do you, lady. Anyway, one summer night last year, she was sitting out on her back patio with her girlfriends, doing their drunk thing. I'm out wrapping up some stuff with my toddler daughter. So she at the time had a medical thing going on that caused her to walk a little weird. Nothing life-altering, and something that would heal with time. She did have a weeble waddle to her, especially when running. Sometimes, she would fall right over. She was out running around with the dog, and the ladies next door were waving and telling her how cute she was. All good. So we go back inside, and I hand her off real quick to the husband. I want to go to the bedroom real fast to change the sheets for bed later. Now, to set the scene, my bedroom is closest to the patio next door. The windows are open because, well, it's summer and it's hot out. I can clearly hear what they're talking about next door. Okay guys, I have to pause here and let you know that the next part is what OP wrote, and I'm just reading it exactly as is. I don't mean this to be offensive to anybody in any way. It's just if I censor it, I'll take away from the story. So, I apologize in advance. The girl says, Do you see the way she was walking? What a little retard! Then they sang, My little retard, my little retard, to the cheerful tune of My Little Pony. I guess because that's what my kid had been wearing. This was followed by sounds that my neighbor felt that a mentally challenged child would make. And then followed by laughter. No, you did not. They didn't realize that anyone could hear them, but I had the lights flipped on and was at the window and shouting in record time. I screamed, stay right there, you bitches. Dead silence as they realized that someone heard them. I come flying down the stairs, where I'm intercepted by my husband that has no idea what I was screaming about. At this point, I'm so mad that I just burst into tears when telling him. We both decide that it would be better to wait to confront until tomorrow. Everyone next door is wasted, and there's no way of telling how many people she has over. Not long after this, we all go to bed. My husband was outside having his last smoke before sleep, and the next door bitch sent her boyfriend to put the fire pit out. My husband and he were talking, and the boyfriend says, Huh, that got crazy earlier, huh? My husband responds, Well, your girlfriend did make fun of a child, 
So understanding that as her parents were upset shouldn't be too hard. The boyfriend responded, Ugh, man, you know how girls are when they're drinking? They say things they don't mean. All girls are like that when they're drunk. Husband tells him that I've drank with a lot of women and have never heard one of them making fun of a kid behind their back, a two-year-old no less. So yeah, that excuse doesn't fly with me. The boyfriend then has the audacity to say, Look dude, I don't want drama, just let it go. Sure, just let your girlfriend know that we're waiting on her heartfelt apology. Needless to say, the boyfriend's gonna go with whatever gets him into bed with that drunk girl. Not a drop of compassion, even though he's a nurse. Husband came in after that, and I waited a week to confront her about it because I thought what she did was so shameless that she would surely feel bad. Nope. I happened to be outside one day watering when she comes back from wherever she was, and I gave her the stare down. All she could muster was, You got a problem, bitch? Do something about it. Before making her way inside. So the revenge. It turns out that she wanted to be a policewoman in our town. And how do I know that? Well, they sent a letter to the people on our street to feel her out before accepting her into the program. Just a standard questionnaire about our dear neighbor friend and whether or not we have an opinion on why or why not she'd make a good officer. I wrote a damn essay, you guys, complete with photos of her lovely patio covered in cans and bottles from the night before. I took pictures of their dogs having to sit outside in the pouring rain all day, chained up. I wrote and asked how they would feel if someone on the force makes fun of kids with disabilities, and who also could possibly show up to work drunk. I sent it back in and just forgot about it, and it was petty, yes, but it felt so, so good. I say this because last night, I heard her crying to one of her buddies about how she couldn't seem to break into the local police force which had been the whole reason she'd pursued her major in college, and she isn't sure what to do now. Now, I'm not sure my letter did it. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I'm not sure if they tell you why you aren't being considered, other than you're not. In that moment though, I felt vindicated. I hope you enjoyed that revenge, you soulless bitch. I hope those jokes at my kid's expense was worth your future career going down the drain. Guys, being drunk is still no excuse for making fun of a little child. I've been blackout drunk many, many times in my life and have never even thought of saying anything remotely close to what she said. And no, what her boyfriend said was not even close to being true. Not all women say dumb things when they're drunk, especially something like that. That's what 10-year-old kids would do, not a grown-ass woman. But you'd be surprised how many people in this world are grown adults and still act like they're 10, so I'm not surprised she said what she said. Guys, and that wraps up another episode of r slash pro revenge. Thanks for joining me for the stories today. If you guys missed the last episode of r slash pro revenge, OP gets freaking framed by his coworker because she doesn't like him. She frames him by stealing a $5,000 ring to get him fired. I hope you guys got your revenge fix for the day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.